And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh bin Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh bin Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh bin Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil about your life and what it will become. A story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam. Olam. Shall, Shall you, you pay, pay, wow, pay. pay The universe, the universe of, of you, you pay, pay, wow, pay. Pay. Brought, brought to you by, by the nation, nation of you, of you pay, pay, wow, pay. Working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in the year 6002 the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. Today, we shall continue with part two of judicial murder. I am the mother of Yahweh Ben Yahweh. I love you, Junior. You were my first and I love you. Yahweh Ben Yahweh. <laughs> I think Robert Rozier was impeached, was sliced, was diced, was destroyed. You know, at one point in the case, I tried to put on evidence uh, from a, a psychologist who'd done a psychological profile on Rozier based on standard uh, and well-respected research on, on the uh, elements of a psychopathic personality. And uh, he, had an, he had reviewed Rozier's grand jury testimony, his testimony in a, in a civil RICO trial several years ago, and all of his trial testimony, including the cross-examination and the direct examination. And uh, I think Bobby scored like 26 out of a possible 27 as a psychopath, pure psychopath, right up there with Ted Bundy and, uh, and Charles Manson. I mean, this guy is the, is the, is the, is the, is the consummate liar. He lies so much he doesn't even know what's true. So Rozier is a liar? Was Judas a liar with Jesus? He was falsely accused then, the same as I'm being uh, falsely accused today. It's religious persecution, and I suspect deep racism. 
Ralph Deloche, a fellow who played for the Dallas Cowboys for the New York Jets. Ralph Deloche, a probation officer, sworn to tell the truth every day of his life, works with juveniles. What did Ralph Deloche tell you? From Sacramento, California, he traveled here to tell you something real important. He knew Robert Rozier eight years before he ever met Yahweh Ben Yahweh. <clears throat> eight years. And what was Robert Rozier saying eight years before he met Yahweh Ben Yahweh? I can get away with anything I want. I won't be noticed. I won't be detected. It's just what he's trying to say Yahweh Ben Yahweh taught him. It's not true. It's not true. Yahweh Ben Yahweh didn't tell Robert Rozier this stuff. This was part of Robert Rozier before he ever heard of Yahweh Ben Yahweh, before he ever met Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Ralph Deloche, he knew one thing. He knew Robert Rozier. What did he tell you about Robert Rozier? He had a nickname, Lying Bob. Lying Bob, that was his nickname through college. Because he was so manipulative, so deceitful, he had such a lack of discipline, he was uncoachable. Ralph Deloche said all these things. Robert Rozier is not capable of following orders. He is incapable of following any rules. Robert Rozier wanted to use Yahweh Ben Yahweh, and he did. The tape shows you Yahweh Ben Yahweh. You don't have to like him. It's not to show you to like him, to dislike him. It's to show you him. This is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. I'm only looking for you who want to be moral. I prefer every single one of you that don't want to be moral to leave. Uh, Neri is steady breaking the rules around here. So his mind is not divine. He certainly isn't moving in a moral fashion. You want to build a kingdom separate from mine? Is that your aim? Well, see, you better get to be moral. See, you better start practicing moral behavior. Because I'm not going to keep you here breaking the rules, not conforming, at the wrong state of mind, don't want to be upright, don't want to be right, don't want to be straightforward and honest and good and all these words we have down here. If you spend your time studying those, you'll be all right if you accept it. Robert Rozier pointed his finger at an innocent man to escape his date with death in the electric chair. Being conscious of the federal government's desire to bring Yahweh Ben Yahweh down, Robert Lying Bob Rogier took advantage of an opportunity to avoid death and to get out of jail by agreeing to testify against an innocent man, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. The federal jury was confused they deliberated for five and a half days and sent out at least four notes saying they were unable to decide or agree upon a decision because they were confused about how to apply RICO to the facts of the case. They convicted as a result of that confusion and out of ignorance. And when the same case was heard on the state level, without the confusion of RICO, the jury returned an immediate and unanimous verdict of not guilty as to all allegations, as to all defendants, especially Yahweh Ben Yahweh. The federal case, which grouped so many people together, charged, had an underlying current, an underlying current of allegations that had really no, no bearing as to whether these defendants killed anyone. We sought to take Janet Reno's deposition and the judge said, well, you know, we don't want to bother her, but we were permitted to take the depo of one of the highest ranking people in the office. 
and he stated under oath, he said, the reason that we went there was because the case was weak, and we knew that if we threw them all together and called it racketeering, that there was a better chance of it sticking. J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation from 1924 to 1972, issued a memo dated March 4, 1968, which admitted to the Bureau's secret agreement with the media to discredit targeted groups. The memo points to the government as the source of a slanderous media attack, even through black reporters. It states, in every instance, careful attention must be given to the proposal to ensure the targeted group is disrupted or discredited through the publicity and not merely publicized. The stated purpose of the slanderous campaign, quote, is to prevent sincere black leaders from gaining respectability by discrediting them in, one, the responsible Negro community, two, the white community, three, and with the followers of the movement. Every story, every article gets worse and worse and worse. I think the media is in a frenzy to rid this county of Yahweh Ben Yahweh and the Temple of Love. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is not a criminal, has never been a criminal, and has never committed criminal acts. The government wanted my father so badly that they used the media to dampen his character and to make him appear to be guilty before other men, knowing full well that they were out to convict an innocent man. Through the way it was released through the press, the government had done a publicity job of terrorizing the country. But if you read the papers, you would think that you were about to deal with a machine gun toting bunch of killers. But as time went on, everybody realized that this was hype. I understand it because it was politics, it was to get Yahweh Ben Yahweh out. Because the government really presented a scary case, and it was the sort of thing that was designed to scare people. Trudy Novicki, one of the prosecutors, literally walked through a, uh, a graveyard in her closing argument. She had props of dead people in the courtroom, dead tombstones that she walked through. And, I mean, it was eerie to be there. And it was designed to, 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 to intimidate and to scare the jurors. And the only aim of it was to to discredit the nation about Yahweh, was to discredit Yahweh men Yahweh. Uh, the other people who were charged and who were found not guilty or found guilty of conspiracy, they were just window dressing. They were just there. Any of those people could have been out on the street now if they had come in and said, Yahweh ben Yahweh told me to do this, that, or the other. And everything would have been fine for them. After a trial spanning five months and almost two years of pretrial detention, it was time for the Yahweh case to go to the jury. Let's take a look at what the jury had to consider. Number one, RICO, which the court nor the lawyers understand and which the government used as a tool of confusion to create a smokescreen of guilt where there was none. And two, Robert Rochier, a pathological liar, a serial killer who would have done anything to get out of jail at the expense of innocent people. I'm not, I'd like for the individuals who, who view this to know that uh, RICO is such a complex area of the law that it literally took um, a combination of, there were 17 defense lawyers and uh, two prosecutors, so that's a total of 19 lawyers plus the judge. It took us essentially two days to fashion um, a RICO instruction. Here is an actual set of the jury instructions in the federal case. Here is what the jury, none of which were lawyers, had to use to sort out the evidence in this case. 
which began in January of 1992 and ended in mid-May of 1992. Here is what the jury had to use to reach a verdict in the case of the United States of America versus Yahweh bin Yahweh and the nation of Yahweh. Oh, they were definitely confused. I think everybody was confused. I think the judge was confused. I think the prosecutors were confused because there was a, one, one of the questions that came back pointed out to us conflicts in the instructions that we had given them. My, my client was charged in one count of the indictment. The jury came back guilty one count and not guilty the other count. Um, which was a little surprising because they acquitted him of something he wasn't charged with. I think it was pretty much uh, impossible for the jury to fully understand uh, all of the consequences, all of the language that was involved uh, in that RICO instruction. The jury for three days was sending out notes saying we're hopelessly deadlocked. We thought they were deadlocked on uh, specific crimes or specific defendants. We later learned from interviews uh, uh, that were done through the, through, the, through the newspaper reporters that they couldn't agree on what the heck the jury instructions meant. None of the defendants were found guilty of racketeering in the federal trial. But Yahweh bin Yahweh and six out of 16 of his co-defendants were convicted of conspiracy to commit RICO. The conviction was for conspiracy. Yes, as I was beginning to say, it is considered uh, one of the prosecutor's favorite tools. Um, conspiracy says that you all got together and talked about doing something. Historically, um, it is the charge that jurors will, when pushed, convict upon. When the acquittals came out and the mistrials on, on the vast majority of the charges, I think out of 21 potential counts uh, on all 16 defendants that there were, there were six convictions and everyone else was either acquitted or mistried. Um, the idea that while one prosecutor was standing in front of the camera saying uh, we've heard that the jury has spoken, we don't agree with what they've said, but we will honor it. And the other prosecutor is over there in a back room filling out charges to have people who've just been acquitted by a jury who said, we didn't believe anything that this one witness, Robert Rogier, said. Yahweh bin Yahweh, along with four of his co-defendants, three of whom who had already been released from federal custody, were indicted by the state of Florida. While the federal prosecutor was out front proclaiming that they would honor the jury's verdicts, the state's attorney, Trudy Novicki, who had been loaned to the federal government to help try the federal case, was in the back room filling out new charges against Yahweh bin Yahweh on the state level. This means that they were recharged using the same identical criminal acts using the same prosecutor, Trudy Novicki, using the same government's witnesses, and using the same evidence. The difference? No RICO. No confusion. Just the facts. The result? Not guilty. The state of Florida versus Yahweh being Yahweh. We the jury at Miami-Dade County, Florida, the 17th day of December, 1992, find the defendant, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, not guilty of the offense as to first degree murder. And I think the result in the state court was, was, was an was a absolutely perfect example of it. They had a two-week trial and the jury was out for two hours. They probably picked a foreman, had lunch, and then went out and threw the case out of the courthouse. It has to do with the fact that in the federal case, they were permitted to bring in so much stuff legally. In the state case, they had to try a true case of murder. They had to prove that these men had committed a murder and or that Yahweh ben Yahweh had instructed them to commit a murder. And it just could not, 
it couldn't be done. And um, I, that's, that's, I think that's basically the, the difference. And, and they came back very quickly, too, with that verdict in, in, the, in the state murder trial, the not guilty verdict. Um, after us being, it took us a week to pick a jury, it took us a week to try the case, and they came back with a verdict in two hours, and that included them ordering and eating their dinner. So I thought that they were pretty certain that there was no case. After hearing all the facts of the case, minus the confusion of Rico, the state jury clearly saw that Yahweh ben Yahweh and his co-defendants were innocent men. However, because of the conviction for conspiracy in the federal case, Yahweh ben Yahweh was sentenced to spend 18 years of his life in the federal penitentiary at Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Lewisburg is the only federal maximum security penitentiary on the east coast of the United States. It is one of America's toughest and most secure prisons housing only violent career criminals. These are the guidelines used by the Federal Bureau of Prisons to designate where particular inmates will go. These guidelines reserve Lewisburg Penitentiary for inmates who have been sentenced to 25 years to life. Yahweh Ben Yahweh does not belong at Lewisburg Penitentiary if for no other reason than the fact that he was sentenced to 18 years. After arriving at Lewisburg Penitentiary, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was stalked by another inmate. Supporters of the Nation of Yahweh have requested that Yahweh Ben Yahweh be moved to an appropriate facility. As of yet, federal prison officials have ignored that request. This is the place where they sent Yahweh Ben Yahweh whom they label a first-time offender, a man who has never harmed anyone, a man who has never broken the law in his life, never even had a parking ticket. Lewisburg is the modern-day equivalent of a leper's colony. Folk are sent to Lewisburg to die or to serve impossible sentences, sentences without route, no hope of ever coming home. It's like a terminal institution. A lot of guys have on their release date, death, which means you never go home. It is like a super, ultra, maximum security institution. So if you got any leadership ability or any organizational skill and you can influence other folk, they put you in a place like Lewisburg where, you, where you, they reduce or minimize your influence, your contact, and then the leadership ability you may have is nil or is reduced to nothing. Have you ever seen or know of anyone ever being killed in prison? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, Lewisburg is the only prison, well, I guess the, the only prison I've been in that uh, I saw death on a frequent basis. I mean, it's, uh, it's no, it was no problem to go to eat, sit at the table, and the guy right next to you sitting at the, at the next table who have a knife ran right through his throat while you're eating and blood sprouting all over and you get up and you, uh, everybody break out running. You go down the hall and you think that was something. You see another guy laying in the hall dead. They call Lewisburg the graveyard. They call it the big house, uh, the place that nobody ever wanted to go. It's the place where it's like never, never land, where you never, ever come home, not walking. Yahweh Ben Yahweh remains incarcerated at Lewisburg Penitentiary while his attorneys continue to press for his transfer. A national grassroots campaign is being organized by supporters and friends of the Nation of Yahweh to finally expose the massive injustices against Yahweh ben Yahweh in the federal case. And no matter what has been said and what has been done, I know my brother. And I know him to be sweet, loving, kind, industrious, and always trying to encourage one to be the best that they can be. But he worked and made his own way and enrolled in Texas University. And I tried uh, to give him a little something. I uh, wanted to give him a little something, 
But I can't remember him ever receiving anything. He wanted to make it on his own. He wanted to provide for himself. And I say he did a good job. He never was in trouble. We never had any problems with him. None so ever. He was manable, intelligent, and everybody, if they didn't love him, I don't know why. Because he had a personality which was loving. And he yet has that personality. We don't need to wait for others to do what we know that we must do. So says Yahweh bin Yahweh. We don't need to wait on a government stipend to pay the way. So says Yahweh bin Yahweh. We don't need to be dependent on nobody but ourselves. So says Yahweh bin Yahweh. Pool your pennies, pool your dollars, pool your talents, pool your energy, and the world is yours. Who is this man, Yahweh bin Yahweh? Sparkling white buildings are one trademark of Yahweh developments. Many in the economically depressed neighborhoods where they operate say lowered crime rates are another. It was uh, a lot of street crimes, uh, a lot of prostitution, drug activity, and any place they are, it, it gets cleaned up. We're very pleased to present to you the Whitney M. Young Jr. Memorial Humanitarian Award in Economic Development, presented to Yahweh Ben Yahweh. And I would like to thank all of you of our commu community of all races, creeds, and colors. I love you all for a better Miami. Thank you. We hope you have enjoyed part two of Judicial Murder. We look forward to you joining us next week for the conclusion of this special presentation. And now, we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the East with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikardesh Shemayaka. Tavo Malkuteaka, Yase Razonka, Kivashimayam Kane Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukenu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Karti Enu, Kimosha Sol King, Gamanak Nu, La Koteum La Nu, Veal Tefi Enu, Lade Nisayom, Kim Kal Senu, Min Hara, Kilaka, Hamamlaha, Veha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Selah. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and His Son, Yahweh bin Yahweh, love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the transcript or DVD to the Judicial Murder series, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337 and ask about our special discount. You can now access the Divine Mind of Yahweh Ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.